Okay, so here's Dropbox. Uh, Dropbox has this capability as well. The neat thing about Dropbox is you could store your data in somebody's Dropbox account, which could be useful. Um, so the way this works uh, is that the same sort of three entries here. So let's look at handle uh, index. So have the same login, but log to Dropbox instead. Somebody clicks that, and it takes them to this one. Uh, and so we're using that session we had before. And then this is all standard stuff. Create the URL values. And this is what um, this is what Dropbox expects. Very similar. Uh, you had to add this response type. But otherwise, very similar to the other one. Find ID, redirect URI. Remember the state that we created up here so we can prevent the um, forgery attack. And then the redirect here, it's a Dropbox URL, but it looks very similar to the GitHub URL, right? Um, so that's pretty, pretty much the same. So they go to the Dropbox site, and now they have a button that says allow or deny or whatever, and they click allow, and that takes them to this page, okay? Uh, because we have these routes up here. It takes them to this page, because that's the redirect URI here, okay? Um, and this, you have to add to your app inside of Dropbox. You have to add this URL as an allowed URL. Uh, otherwise, um, it will reject it. But So then it takes you to, to here, this handle authorize. And it passes it as the same, same names. So like I said, these are all very similar. This one comes through as code and state. Uh, you check the state like we did before. And if they're, if they're not the same, then something went wrong. Um, otherwise, you do get token and uh, Dropbox doesn't have email, but it has user ID, and you can use user ID in your database instead of email. Same idea. Um, so let's see, look at token. Okay. So get token is up here. So these inputs are very similar to the way we got the get access token, pretty much the same way. Uh, you give it these inputs, the client ID, client secret, um, redirect. This was a little different. You had to add this. Um, and then the grant type of authorization code. Uh, and then you post it to this endpoint. And it sends back JSON data. Uh, that JSON data, so the other one sent back like access token equal whatever and some other parameter equal whatever. This one is sending back that as JSON, okay? So we have to JSON encode it instead. And that's what you've done with this Dropbox data, which is defined up here. So it just has this access token and UID. Everybody remember what this means? So those are our tags, and tags define the relationship of the JSON data to how we fill it in the code data. Um, it probably would not have been necessary for him, but it is necessary for access token and token type because they have this underscore in them. And I don't think you can figure that out, so you have to add it for those. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so in general, if you had done another provider, if you had done Google or YouTube or even Facebook, it's going to be very similar. Um, some have different endpoints or slightly different rules, but in general, that's the, the way you do it. Um, so the idea is that uh, once we have that, whatever, that user ID or email or username or whatever we want to use as sort of our uh, key in the, in the database, uh, we'll store a user profile on our side in the data store uh, associated with it. And we'll put their name in there or any other information we want. And then we'll have a field that might be um, Dropbox user ID, okay? And so we have their uh, name, maybe we have our own ID, right, this might be an int, this might be a string, and this would be a string, actually it's an int. Um, but, you know, whatever it is. And we could have others, you know, we could have um, GitHub, user ID, and that could be an int or whatever as well. And for some of these, they'll be zero, so they're not set, and others, it will be set. But we can look up the profile by the Dropbox user ID, or the GitHub user ID, or the Facebook user ID, and so we could support multiple login types, okay? Um, merging those two profiles together is tricky, uh, but most people tend to use one way of logging into the website, so you, it's probably not a big deal. But uh, merging them can be hard. That's why we were looking for the email address before. 
because we can use the email address as a way of merging the, the disparate profiles. Um, but otherwise, we could have different profiles, and that's just life. And you just have to remember what you use to log in when you hit there. Um, and most of these sites, that's that is an issue we're going into. Okay. So any questions about third-party login? Um, okay. So like I said, third-party login is super common for two reasons. One, because uh, managing your own users is uh, pretty annoying. But secondly, because a lot of times we actually do need to get the data from, from these third-party services. In fact, our applications, uh, often in sort of modern web, web application development, it's, we have a service which relies heavily on other services to do what it needs to do. Um, and so we, we are sort of piggybacking on top of these other services to build our application. Um, and so I wanted to show, there's sort of one remaining topic that we'll cover. Uh, with kind of two, but, um, and that's this.